The entire time, right? The entire time. I'm with Mark Apka. Did I pronounce it right? I don't Namaste. even think I know how to pronounce it properly. Yes, yeah, so that works. Apka, <laughs> Apka. Apka. They all so work. your, your last name, Mark, is a Czech origin, right? Czech Polish, yeah. Czech Polish. Because your parents were from, from there? My grandparents were from, uh, my grandparents on my father's side are from Poland. Oh, okay. Yeah. And and I was reading um, your bio on Wikipedia. And by the way, everyone, you can check Mark Apka out. And uh, it's going to be easier than me doing all the, say, all the resume. <laughs> and you, you were born in Buffalo, New York, right? Mm -hmm. And then you moved to Rome in New York. And then mm -hmm. you studied music in Syracuse, New York. I was reading and it's bizarre that those two like Italian names like Syracuse and Rome but in the United States in the United States yeah but I've been anytime I would say like growing up anytime I'd say oh, I'm from Rome I'm from Rome they're like Italy I'm like no New York definitely a different place I know and then I started in <laughs> Syracuse oh in Italy no in, in New York so kind of uh, Italy have been part of your path because you you have relatives in Italy you have like ancestors Italian ancestors mm -hmm. at, you do? Great, great, yeah, great, great grandparents from my uh, mother's side are from Sicily, and I'm still learning a lot about this. I, I just grew up knowing I was Italian because I was raised very in a, in a very Italian American household. So, um, and that's why Rome is also a very, very Italian American area in okay. upstate New York. But um, oh. yeah, that's all I know so far is that I have great grandparents of Italian origin, and my grandfather. Um, I think he. I think they came over. And then he was born oh, okay. in, Amer in America. I might, uh, Mark, I might translate something in Italian. Please. Just to yeah, make sure for the Italian audience. So Mark, um, lui ha studiato negli Stati Uniti e ha dei nonni del sud Italia, vero? South Italy, right? Your, grand your grandfather's from South. Okay, I'm mm -hmm. going to translate just here and there something. Please, so, uh, I'll try I, to keep up. I... I had a lot of people, a lot of Italians asking me, oh, what do you have to do to be an actor in LA or w what's the path to follow to, to be an actor? So I, I thought about you because I saw your work and for me, and I, I'm genuinely saying that for me, you're a great actor. What I, what I saw, it was wonderful. And so I'd like to know more about an actor in LA, essere un fare l'attore a Los Angeles. What does it mean? Cosa significa? But what was your path? How was your path of being becoming an actor? How did you start? Come hai iniziato? Okay, I can speak of my path. Yeah, there's definitely many, many routes and many paths. Um, and for some people, it happens right away. And for some people, there's a lot of investment and a decade can go by. And then it finally, you know, their hard work pays off. Um, but for me, it was... Uh, it was always a thought. I grew up doing uh, a lot of community theater and uh, really loving acting. Uh, and through my high school years, I was kind of struggling between the path of music or the path of uh, acting. Uh, I always had a, a desire to direct at a, from a young age as well, but acting would be my segue into that, which I'm doing now. Um, but yeah, my path was m more or less the old school, just like pack up your bags and head to Hollywood type thing. So, so I, did I, you study in a, were you in a film school in New York? Not New York, or, no. I was no. just doing, the only thing that, that I really had, because I, I, I lived upstate, not in the city. So the only thing I really had access to there was, was some university studies, um, but mostly community theater and just kind of like doing it, doing the acting and, and oh, you know, learning from, a, from experience. Like doing like a performance, right? Exactly, exactly. Like performing on stage, uh, making little short films with friends and like all, all the silly stuff you do in the beginning. Um, that really, uh, I think, sets the foundation for what kind of an artist you become. 
you know, with when you can when you can work with almost no uh, um, no amenities, then you can you can really make something special, you know. Uh, but yeah, for me, it was just to pick up and, and drive. I event I talked about it for a while, then I set a date, and then I packed a, a U-Haul trailer and put it on the back of my Nissan wow. Maxima, and I, I just drove here. I'd never even been here either. I just drove here. Oh, you drove. You just I guidato fino a qui. I impacchettato tutto quanto. Sei venuto qui a Hollywood, the land of the dreams of I don't know dreams or illusion. I don't know. <laughs> for some people, maybe illusion. <laughs> No, what no, you no. make of it yeah but what what made you say i want to act because you studied music what made you decide that acting was more your your talent or your your career would have been your career well the simple answer to that is i really enjoyed doing it um i had a lot of fun i i enjoyed the camaraderie of it and the family that i built through it um you know as as a kid when you're going through the the woes of high school you kind of find your your group and your thing to distract you to you can get through it all. Mm -hmm. um, and that was that for me. But, uh, but also just, you know, as you go through deciding what you want to do with your life and what you want to be, like, for me, acting is, is the, uh, the opportunity to kind of dip your toe in all the waters and really explore different acts of life or walks of life. Like, if you, there are times where I was like, I'd, I'd love to be a firefighter. I'd be really good at calm under, you know, heavy situations and I'd love to save lives and all that stuff. But like, then, then I realized that I can do each one of those to an extent by the roles that I play in my projects. And if I want to learn what it's like to be a firefighter, I can do a project as a firefighter and, and visit fire halls and talk to firefighters and understand what what goes into it and, right and like each, the your character yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I played a high school wrestler but i'd never wrestled before so like training and learning how to wrestle and really realizing how yeah, how was about that film mark i saw i saw i didn't i haven't seen the film but i saw the trailer and it showed a lot how was the preparation for that film you played it was intense because i you know my character had to had to play a state championship wrestler and in, in to be a state champ, there's a there's a relaxed uh, there's a relaxed relaxability to uh, you know that type of person. So learning the learning the moves, learning uh, how to maneuver through them, but then finding a way to relax them as though I've been doing them forever was the was the process, you know. And also, um, sure, like you have to pay attention also how the camera is shooting you. Like so, you have to be intense when you fight, but at the same time, you need to know there's a an external eye looking at you like watching. yeah it adds it and adds it, another layer to like making sure that you're cheating out and opening up to the camera so they see you and then like wow. the the really silly moments are like close-ups for things when you're when you're getting somebody into a some type of a hold and you you have to sit there and cradle this other man and like have people spray sweat on your face because it's the middle of the scene and you're just kind of holding him like a baby so yeah <laughs> holding him like a baby waiting for them to call action and kind of laughing your way through it like it, there's there's a silliness to it as well but but to, to kind of wrap up that first question is just like getting involved being able to play a, a football player learning about what it's like to be a lawyer like you start to gain a real appreciation for that line of work and understand what what goes into it so you you know it's 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 just that for me acting is the best way to explore all of the human experience yeah. and does he is there another way of being, let's say, relieved by maybe life problems, like while you're acting, to be away from reality as well for you? Or I know maybe I maybe well, for me if for I acted a little bit, but um, there was an escape, maybe. Was yeah, like it can be it can be whatever you want it to be. It can be an escape, but I mean the the number one rule that is very important with when you when you step onto any set is letting go of everything else that's going on in life because yeah. unless, unless it serves you specifically to the character you're playing it can only inhibit you so you have to be very careful about that but yeah if you're if you're fighting with your mom and you're pissed off at her and then you're going into a scene where you're having an <laughs> argument like bring it in get it out it's, it's therapy perfect, perfect. yeah uh, and then uh, apologize to your actor and be like look i'm gonna let you have it because uh, you know i got all this building up inside of me I'm gonna I'm gonna translate very quick because I, I don't wanna I don't wanna um, disjoin the conversation like and sometimes exactly. this is what happened when I translate. But anyways, Mark Marco, because your name is Marco, 
ha detto che per lui recitare comunque è un modo per interpretare diversi personaggi, cioè se lui vuole uh, essere un, uh, un, un pugile, come in effetti ha interpretato in uno dei suoi film, lo può fare perché si può preparare per, per quel tipo di personaggio. O anche um, per interpretare un, uh, fire, un vigile del fuoco. I was thinking about the word in Italia, like a fire, fire, like anche un, yeah, un vigile del fuoco. So there's a lot of preparation, c'è molta preparazione e questo che lui ama del recitare. But you, Mark, acted a lot in theater. Is there a difference for you acting for theater and in front of a camera? Yes. Like, do you enjoy, I... What do you enjoy most? Che cosa ti piace di più? I enjoy both for different reasons. So when you're when you're on a stage and you're working in front of a live audience, you you get to like feed off of the energy of the audience. And like if there if something you do is funny or a, like drastic and you feel the the response of the audience, it kind of fuels you forward. So it's that aspect, especially in comedy, is a lot of fun because laughter really just get puts you on the roll, you know. Um, but also with film, um, you get to you get to play more with subtlety. So you, you can think something and the camera is going to pick it up because, the, you know, your eyes don't lie. Uh, you can't be as subtle on stage because it just kind of looks like a person in the distance standing there if you're working through something. So there's, there's a different level of expression that happens on stage versus on uh, a set. And even like if I wanted to work gently through a scene, I can do that. And uh, on scene, you, can barely, you can barely hear me. Exactly. But I can do that through like on camera because there's a microphone right there and there's a boom above me that's picking it up but on stage right. people so are like speak up realistic. yeah i think in front yeah. of the camera everything is more real life in real life situation theater has to be you know deve essere tutto grande per il teatro perché l'ultima persona deve vederti the last person has to see you or has to hear you deve sentire yes Yes, and maybe but then even the... the emotions, right? In front of the camera mm -hmm. has to be... Because Marco ha detto che gli occhi non mentono. I really like this, like your eyes don't lie. I tuoi occhi non mentono. Quindi tutto deve essere più misurato, più sottile, more subtle. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Quasi. No, no, no. Please, and, and if you want to translate more often in between so you don't have to remember everything I say, then just like start talking and I'll shut oh. up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. Uh, Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'll do my best, but you yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, no. I'm down. Yeah, just do what you got to do. But um, uh, yeah, I, I think with, with um, uh, what was the thought that I had? Uh, with yeah, with with all of that, like it's still, the the balance is still finding a way to keep to keep the performance grounded, whether you are expressing yourself largely or subtly. And um, when you do find that groove, like it's still it's still the same experience. You're still like, you're still expressing um, all, all of the, all of the research and work you've done on the role and then living in that present moment, you're, you're able to express it. And also I'm sure like for theater, uh, I never acted in theater, I've been a dancer like that, but I always thought how can an actor learn so many lines for theater and remembering everything like I, because I, for the, for a film, I think you have, no, I think it is like that. Uh, you have shorter lines, you know, to act, to learn. Instead for the theater, you have to carry out like a very long pe like performance. Yeah. So like, was it easy for you? Like uh, for theater, like memorizing so many lines or like, did it ever happen to forget? Ti è mai successo di dimenticare delle battute? Uh, well, you, what, the way you explain that, that makes a lot of sense. And I can see, I can see how that would be a difficult thing. I, I'd also argue that it's, it's really hard for like television sometimes. So with theater, you, you learn through doing, there's an extensive rehearsal process. You're, you're showing up every day, you're holding your book, you're reading through it. Eventually you do it so many times that you're just like, you know, it in your sleep. That's the goal at least. Mm -hmm. Um, with with a TV job or a movie job, you got to show up on set already memorized. And sometimes that means you're learning it on your own and you haven't really done it out loud with somebody. So there's there's the chance that you might flub a line in that sense because the pressure is high because it's like cameras rolling, time to go. But 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 on opening night, hopefully uh, you've had enough <laughs> enough weeks of rehearsal where you've done this so many times that it's like saying your ABCs. It's like, in you your just, body. Like you can do it. Exactly. It's part, yeah, of you. part of you. And 
And when you lose a line on stage, like I, I've seen it happen. It's probably happened to me. Uh, you, you also rely on your counterpart to like, you find, you end up finding your, like, you know, in, in, in class it's happened. You, in acting, you guys, what in acting, yeah, in acting class it's happened for me because acting class is very much like theater. You're, you're doing your scene in front of people in class, um, at least prior to COVID we were doing that. Uh, okay. But uh, you're, you're doing this in front of people. So, so if you drop your line and the other person doesn't have their cue, they, you, you find out where to pick up and you pick up somewhere in the oh, scene okay. that you both know and you find your way through. Um, but in like a yeah, great example sure, for yeah, me, you feel your, your partner, your, your acting partner, like there has to exactly. be, there has to be a union, like a, yeah. you, can say you have each like, other's back, you have each other's back. For sure. Mark, um, does it uh, make a difference for acting? Like, can you act at any, any age? I mean, let's talk about, let's talk about here in Los Angeles, we are in LA, Hollywood. What do you think about age? <laughs> what I think about age is like, you ask you ask me if if can you act at any age? Yeah, can you act? At I, will, I will I will ask I will ask you I'll ask you this: Are you a human at any age? See. Yeah. Si. So, si qui... grandpas exist, and grandpas exist in TV shows. Uh, dicono... Toddlers exist, and toddlers mm -hmm. exist in movies. So the age doesn't matter. You you're you're. You can act at any age, and there's always going to be a role available. Maybe let's say, Mark, let's say age in, in order to make it the way they say here in LA. Because sometimes I hear, oh my God, it's 30, you're already old. At 30, you need to have already a life. Uh, That's an illusion. That's an illusion. I, I mean, That's just like, for, for some people feel, feel that because they make it very real through what people say. But there are, there are look at Brian Cranston, look at... Um, Look at, uh, well, what's his name that played the uh, James Bond. Some of these people we didn't even know about until they're in their 40s or 50s. There are women, there are women that like, Daniel Craig. Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman, yeah, was in, two, like, I think Tootsie and Midnight Tootsie, Cowboy. But he was, yeah, but he was like in his 30s at that point. Like, when, when your career takes off is, is when you decide that you're going to stay committed to it. You know what I mean? Like it, it happens when it happens. And the idea, if you're choosing to be an actor, you're choosing to be an actor for the rest of your life. There's no like, I'm gonna try that. You can try the acting thing for 10 years. And then if it doesn't pan out, which it most likely won't with that attitude, then you will move forward. But it's, it's always gonna be available to you. And you're, it's, it's, it's timing. It's mostly timing. It's talent meets timing. And you put the work and you put the work in and eventually you're going to come across the perfect role that like catapults you into so as they say, uh, opportunity. So at the right time, uh, in the right moment, right? Essere nel momento giusto al posto giusto. Chiesto a Mark se l'età è importante soprattutto qui a Los Angeles perché uh, dicono quello che si sente. Uh, l'età è importante che a 30 anni devi avere già una vita tua formata, devi avercela già fatta. Invece lui dice... Ma tu smetti di essere un umano a un'età precisa? No, perché viviamo, viviamo delle esperienze, we live experiences, so, so we don't stop being human. So you can act at any age, any time, and, and we were talking about, stavamo parlando di alcuni attori come Justin Hoffman che hanno avuto una bellissima carriera, a un'età già avanzata, perché Justin Hoffman nel film Tutsi aveva, mi sembra, già 40 anni, credo, Dustin Hoffman, he was in his 40s. But anyways, talking about you, then you uh, land, landed a great role in Days of Our Lives, che in italiano, aspetta che leggo, il tempo della nostra vita. <laughs> That's the title in Italian of the soap opera you were in. Uh, how was that experience, Mario? You did three years, right? Yeah. Uh, this of our lives. How, yeah, I think how was a little it? under a little under three years and uh, over six hundred episodes, which uh, gives come you an idea of how quickly. Come è stata la tua esperienza nel nella sua opera il tempo della nostra vita, Days of Our Lives? How was it for you? It, it, also, I think acting for the soap opera is different than acting in a absolutely film, vero? Absolutely, you... like. Soap actors, soap actors are some of the hardest working actors in, in the industry. Um, you're learning so much dialogue in such a short amount of time. You're wow. shooting sometimes two episodes a day. There would be nights that I'd go home and have to learn 40 pages of dialogue to be ready for the wow. next day. Wow. And 
usually things uh, they move so quick that you there's three cameras set up in different areas in you have to know your blocking to know which camera you're catering to while also remembering the dialogue and, and getting through it all in one take because each camera is giving, picking up a different angle. And it's usually, it's almost like theater. You're going and you're performing, performing and it's being captured by each camera and then you're moving on. So it's not like in movies where you're gonna be like, all right, let's shoot at the wide, let's get warmed up. All right, well, let's move in for some medium shots. Let's move in for your close-ups. Let's turn it around, let's get there. Play. You're not doing it as many times. So it moves very quickly, but, uh, but the, the memorizing, I think that's, that's what I was alluding to when I was saying that it's, it's harder, I think, for TV than it is for a, a play to remember lines because you move, quick, you move quickly. And there are definitely moments on the soap where I would be in the middle of the scene and suddenly blank on what the next line is. And you have to just turn it into a moment and, and look at the other person and, and really I'm collect, sure collect yourself. And the, yeah, yeah, and they can, chop, they can cut that gap moment. if they have to. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I, one, one, one particular thing that comes to mind was I remember saying, hey, we, we actually wrote this monologue and said that we want to have in the scene that we're literally walking to to shoot right now. So they hand it to me as I'm walking and I'm sitting there and I'm going through and I'm just trying to like bring in the information and then I'm holding it in there. I'm in my spot and they go in, in three, two, and then I just drop the paper and I start talking. And you get so used to learning, it's muscle memory. You get so used to doing that daily that you can you can do our potential is much higher than we think it is for memorizing and and you might not remember it five minutes later but you can remember but it to get through. in that moment yeah. like you were like like that you you memorize the model so yeah so you... so go ahead sorry Excuse translate recitare per una in una soap opera in days of our lives is è totalmente diverso che recitare in un film, per esempio ci sono tre camere che si muovono, tutto è a un ritmo molto veloce, molto più che eh, in un film, ovviamente, ovviamente nel teatro. E lui ha raccontato una breve storia, al, prima di, di andare sul set gli hanno dato un monologo che ha dovuto imparare in pochissimo tempo, quindi devi essere pronto, ma è una muscle memory, è una, come si può dire muscle memory, è una, una memoria... Memoria muscolare, I don't know. In Italian, I don't know. I, lo I love in English muscle memory. It's better yeah. than in Italian. <laughs> but uh, do you have any uh, experience, uh, not experience, but uh, any fact or situation that happened while you were shooting uh, Days of Our Lives? Something funny or something memorable for you? Qualcosa che ti è rimasto impresso? mentre recitavi nella, TV, nella serie TV. Like, maybe still today you're thinking about, oh my God, when I did that, or like, oh, when we did that. Yeah, there's always, there's, there's a bunch of those. I mean, that, being on that set was just a lot of fun in general because <laughs> everyone was like a family and we got along and we'd be goofy in between. And um, one thing that came to mind when you said that though, is I remember shooting a very like romantic scene at a picnic with my future fiance and we're drinking wine and talking to each other and like right in the middle of her line that like some air went up her throat and made like a little throat burp and like a noise. And I was like, was that a throat burp? And you would like improvise a little bit. Uh, so that was the thing that like made us So sorry, laughing. Mark, you said, what did you have? I'm sorry. You know, when you, you know, when your stomach rolls or like, like air moves in like oh, your body, okay, like yeah, it was very quiet like and you just, and we just heard this air move up her throat and it oh. just went rrr, rrr, and we just were, I was like was that a throat burp and then we just started laughing so things like that definitely happen and then we take it back a step in the scene and then we pick up where we left off oh, but uh, of course you do it again la la rifate ovviamente sì perché yeah. lui diceva c'era hanno sentito il rumore dell'aria nella gola quando viene dallo stomaco e ovviamente si sono messi a ridere è stato un momento divertente Oh, I, I'm, yeah, I can imagine how many pivotal moments or great moments you, in three years of, of in that TV series, in that soap opera you, you have lived. And right now, are you filming, Mark, right now? Stai, stai lavorando in qualche progetto? In this, in this moment, I'm not. I wrapped a movie about two weeks ago, a couple weeks ago. Um, that was my first, like, feature back since... COVID has happened. So there's a lot of, it's different. So by it's really, way, really great to be working again. I remember because we briefly, we were texting each other for, for the live and you told me a great story. Do you want to share it about your COVID experience? 
Oh, that that'll be a long experience. It's a long. <laughs> yeah, that's a really long one. But in general, I'll just I will say that like it's it it's it's very difficult now to be filming because there's so many precautions that have to be taken and we're being tested constantly and our temperatures being checked and you're going to have false positives that people think they have it and then it shuts down production and they find out they don't have it and then like it's going to pick back up and it's just it costs more money it takes more patience uh you're having masks on in between and it's it's it, it's more difficult but i'm also very grateful to be creating again and i have another one that i'm in preparation for coming up in the beginning of december as well oh, which wow. i'm really excited about too it's yeah it's a film a film this is going to be another feature yeah it's a feature like thriller or a comedy this one's going to be kind of a dark thriller because yeah. i saw you i saw the trailer in scrambled Oh my god it was, oh my it was troppo divertente no Mar marco troppo divertente it was high nerve please check him out in scrambled i i know there's a oh my god mark is funny <laughs> mark, <laughs> marco divertente i love comedy I love yeah it. that was like very it was because when i uh i talked to you many times and uh, you're more it seemed like more serious i mean that's what what i what i see or what i Uh, perceived and when i saw you i mean you're still no you have humor but your humor maybe it's more like contained like it's not like you know it's like, very dry yeah like me like any time you know like oh, like that oh <laughs> uh, yeah 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 it's very dry and it's but in very scramble, like it was great because okay it was subtle eh, pero to me it was i i really loved it. i loved the, the trailer and i'd like to see the film Uh, did you like to play that part? Oh, it was fun. It was such a crazy concept. I loved it. It's it's <laughs> taking it's taking this crazy idea of what a character can be and then then bringing yourself into it and grounding it in reality and being like, "Whoa, what if this person existed?" And yeah, it's just it's so much fun. And then if when the writing supports the comedy, there's it it creates a level that you can start at and then from there working off your co-work co stars I should say awesome. they, are, they are co-workers yes uh you 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 just keep upping the ante and with comedy with with expressive comedy like that you really like the sky's the limit so you can really go 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 crazy il cielo is in the limit right or is the sky what? is in the limit or is the limit i mean i i would i guess they're the same thing Like where does the sky okay. end? No, I'm going to trust it. I want to trust it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Is it is it this I thought the sky is the limit. Is the limit meaning like the sky is almost endless so there is no limit right. implies the same Infatti, thing. Yeah. Il cielo è vero, non è non c'è limite o ci può essere dipende dipende da come lo vediamo, it depends how we want to see it. But do you think Marco Marco uh, Marco <laughs> Marco baby 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 <laughs> Is there a if you have any advice for an actor an italian actor or an american actor like is there a key to make it like you are you are a working actor tu sei un attore che lavora how did this happen like it's about doing casting it's about just luck it's about studying acting like for you well because you you work a lot you've been working a lot and i know how difficult it is to be an actor in 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 LA especially in LA because the competition is so high la competizione è molto grande se c'è una chiave del successo comunque un modo per continuare a recitare casting o fortuna cosa può essere what could it be so yeah i mean for the the main the main advice i would give is just just do it find every opportunity that you can to create make a short film don't don't sit there and wait and be like I will act when I get a studio movie because like you're not going to get to a studio movie until people can see what you can do like you can be making silly skits that you put on YouTube and suddenly someone's like this person's funny they'd be really great in this role in my movie Plus, that has a 3 million dollar budget and then suddenly you're in a 3 million dollar movie which is not a studio movie but it's the beginning of uh, a possible independent that could being picked up by a studio could bring you into another role so it's just continue doing it never be above jobs that thrill you creatively but might not pay you as much in the beginning 
um, because mm -hmm. there's there's dues that got to be paid in that sense where you 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 do you do the work before you get the pay, and that's why when you're making twenty million dollars a film, it's basically back pay for all the years and hours that you put into these other yeah, projects. Yeah. So, like eventually, you can argue that it almost breaks even. Not for some, some make a lot of money, but uh, but Six. but just just do it. Like when I got out here, I I saved enough money to to just focus on trying to find representation and go to school. And then I realized I didn't want to try to get representation until I knew that I was good enough to start going out for some of these roles. So I en enrolled in a school and I was there for a while. And then when I felt comfortable, I jumped into an actor showcase, which is a thing, a, a night where you, you put together a scene with a scene partner and okay. there's a night where the entire audience is just agents, managers and casting directors and all that. And then you perform and then the next day, like your information's on your headshot and then they call is you. Is that and say, how you found your agent, Mark? That's how I found my first agent, yeah. Okay, so I, did, I did a showcase. Si, scusa, Marco dice, Marco, now you're Marco for me. Uh, Marco dice che di comunque non aspettare il grande progetto pagato benissimo, comunque di recitare, di, di, di realizzare dei video magari anche per YouTube perché qualcuno potrebbe notarti. Quindi sempre essere in, in movimento con la tua carriera d'attore, di non aspettare la chiamata o il grande progetto. E lui, Marco, uh, Mark è stato uh, scoperto con un, uh, facendo uno showcase con diversi manager e, e agenti e così ha trovato il suo, la persona che uh, gli ha portato fortuna. So this person, I was an agent, you, you found an agent, right? Doing, mm -hmm. uh, doing a showcase. Mm -hmm. Is it the same agent or did you change? You, you'll, you'll likely change agents because uh, sometimes you'll start with a starter agent that can bring you to a certain level of your career, but they're, they're not as much interested in higher level things. And then you graduate from there. Um, eventually, the goal is to get with a rep, a rep that is like invest in you, you invest in them and the loyalty That's sticks cool. and you can just go off and create your careers together. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I got the first agent. I got my first audition and this doesn't happen. So I'm not going to say it like in a way that makes people think, oh, you just, it's easy. You go get an agent, then you get an audition, then you book a role. Like it, it is all timing as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, my first audition was The Ghost Whisperer, which is a TV show that was on NBC, CBS. Uh, yep. Uh, years back in I booked that and it was like my first experience on a real television lot on the Universal lot wow. working with, you know, Jennifer Love Hewitt and other other larger actors and like really watching them and learning so much from them in that process. And um, and then, yeah, and then from there, it's a lot of it's a lot like of rejection. Casting, 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 casting. No, no, you, no. You're no, going to no. reject. You're going to yes. be rejected more than you will be accepted. And that, I think, is the key to any actor's success is recognizing that rejection as having nothing to do with you as an actor, uh, having nothing to do with you as a person. Uh, there's a million different reasons why you're not going to get a role that have nothing to do with you. So thinking I blew it, I that and like going down that is, is you sure like the, your, the... your mental health is the, is the most important thing when you're in this industry. Your mental health is the most important yeah, thing for you to protect. Yeah, la salute mentale è la cosa più importante perché Marco, Mark, di Mark Apka dice uh, che il rifiuto, vabbè, i rifiuti saranno molti più rispetto ai sì, però innanzitutto ti fanno crescere e poi non è niente di personale. Se sei rifiutata ci sono milioni di ragioni per le quali tu non puoi uh, far parte di quel progetto, ma devi continuare, you have to keep going and on and on and on. I, I know what you mean, like for my, I, I was a dancer, for my dancing career was kind of the same, uh, not exactly like being an actor, but that was, it was exhausting. And, and yeah. Stuff, but if you're like, if you're passionate, at the, the bottom line, like, you need to be passionate of what you're doing. Se, se tu vuoi fare l'attore, as you said before, se decidi di fare l'attore, lo vuoi fare per tutta la vita. You want to do it for your entire life. And, and you are, by the way, like you are a director as well. You would like to direct films. Do, do you have any project in life for, as a director? Or, or, so uh, what I've been primarily focusing on uh, as, as a director has been, um, I've been doing a lot of smaller videos, PSAs for everything going on in the world right now, uh, directing. I've directed a lot of like um, 
there's no real title for what they are, but like uh, activations for like going to other cities. Like for example, I went to David City with the Hallmark Channel and I directed, I basically documented this whole experience that took place and directed uh, the video for that and put together a final ah. sizzle of it. Like a, basically a short film, a short doc for it. Um, Is it I do a lot of- is it online? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can what's find it. it. Sorry, what's the name? Uh, if you search uh, Christmas in David City, the Hallmark Channel, you'll probably find it. I don't really know exactly, but okay. I can I can send you the link if you want. See, see, see. Yeah, yeah, I'll send you the link. We put it on that. We put it under. Yeah. For the live. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, and then like uh, lots of music videos. Um, uh, 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 the the goal is obviously feature film, and that's that's where I'm headed now. I'm in in very early stages of uh, a feature that I've been trying to get my hands on for a while, and I now uh, have the rights to it. So me and my team are getting rewrites done to the script and just preparing, and that's one we'll probably kick off as soon as uh, COVID decides to Marco, take a hike. Okay. Yeah. So e ha diretto dei video musicali e anche un altro documentario ci dirà più tardi il titolo e poi lo posterò e probabilmente girerà come regista un nuovo progetto Is it a fe feature, Mark? Sarà un film? Yes. Io ne ho ok, sarà un lui girerà un film prossimamente quando la situazione Covid sarà finita Mark do you have a phrase or something uh, that always inspired you uh, you would like to share with us? Una frase che ti ispira, che ti dà coraggio, gives you courage in your, uh, during your day and your life, nella tua vita? Yeah, uh, there is one specific quote that I'll, I'll butcher if I try to paraphrase, but um, essentially it says if you can if you can think it you can create it and if you can uh, dream it you can become it essentially uh, so there's there's really no limits but I think the one that fuels me the most now is just be relentless if you have a goal and you have a vision just be relentless and, and as long as you're doing something each day that moves you towards that and you're on track and there's there's nothing nothing that's gonna get in your way it's inevitable if you are actively working towards anything in life, whether it's acting or uh, relationship right. or anything and in your life. visualize, right? I mean, that, that's what I used to do, visualize, visualizarti, visualize how and where you want to be, uh, when, like the details, right? To think about- get very, get very clear on the details, yeah. And that's something that I have to keep reminding myself because sometimes we're just like, I want to be an actor in LA. I want to be a director in LA, but like, what does that look like? Like what, like, what do you want to be getting paid? What, what kind of movies do you want to be making? Who do you want to be working with? Like um, at, at what level? And the best way to figure that out is like, like ask yourself who inspires me the most? Which directors do I love? Which actors do I love? And then go get their autobiographies and start there and, and get an idea for what they represent and what, you know, what they were after and, and see if your, your, your morals and your, you know, your visions align. And if they do, then that person's already kind of paved the way and you can, you can Perfect. use their trials and tribulations as knowledge to move forward in your, you know, in your, your sì. path. Sì, Mark uh, diceva prima, gli ho chiesto una, se aveva un quote, uh, which is a, I can't remember the name in Italian again. <laughs> uh, oh my God, how do you say quote? Oh, I'm blanking. Oh. A quote, anyway, a Just, quote. What about a saying? Una frase, una frase di, yeah. non, non mi, uh, Sometimes I'm blanking with Italian words, I don't know. And lui dice, se puoi sognarlo, se puoi pensarlo, lo puoi creare e lo puoi fare. E quindi questo è uh, il suo consiglio, his advice for whoever and for all of you, all the actors around the world <laughs> who are watching us. That's what you have to do, hard work, keep working, keep creating, continuare a creare. Um, e le cose si realizzeranno, come in tutti i lavori alla fine, you know, with everything, visualize, visualizzare i dettagli di quello che vuoi fare. And I think also, Mark, uh, and then I'm gonna let you go, and I really appreciate your time, grazie mille per il tuo tempo. My pleasure. Ma I think when it isn't clear in our mind, maybe because 
and I'm, I'm speaking for myself, maybe because we are not ready. I'm sure that once the details are coming to your mind, like everything is going to be settled, is because probably that's the right moment. When it's still fuzzy, probably there's still maybe some, some visualization, you know, like some work to do. Probably just okay. um, nobody's calling me right now. So yeah. <laughs> um, I think penso dicevo che quando uh, il progetto ancora non è chiaro nella nostra mente è perché forse non siamo pronti. Quindi c'è ancora da aspettare. Be patient, right? Essere pazienti. I, I think. I mean, for me, per me. Absolutely. Is... Marco, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Right, just, just to, just to, just to ride on what you said, like, yeah, patience is, is key. Patience is key. Acceptance is key. If you walk around in a constant state of acceptance, then everything thrown your way, whether it's rejection or opportunity, you're going to be able to take it in and process it versus allow it to de derail you or give you false hope. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you are patient and if you accept and then just have a mindset of, if if that person can do it, then why can't I? Yeah, se quella if, persona if, può farla, anch'io lo posso fare. And why shouldn't I? Right? right? So like, if, if it's got to be someone, why not me? Exactly. Sometimes we see people, and by the way, I have to say, I have to look up. Quote is a citazione. Sorry. Citazione. I'm obsessed with, you know, finding the right word. So yeah. citazione is a quote. And yeah, exactly. Like if sometimes we, we, we see like celebrities or people, oh, you know, I never become that. Or I never reach that. No, why? They follow the path. It happened. So my path for sure is different. Il mio cammino e la mia carriera sarà diversa. Però non vuol dire che sarà di meno valore. It doesn't mean it's going to be less worth it than what another person had or the person or the celebrity had la celebrità avuto quindi forza e coraggio and uh, and let's you know keep uh, nourishing our dreams continuiamo ad alimentare i nostri sogni sì okay. sì mark io ok i io ti saluto i want to say hi now i don't want instagram to cut me off brutally brutalmente <laughs> Ti ringrazio okay. tantissimo, Mark. Grazie mille, mille, mille. Del Thank tuo you. tempo. Mark Hapka, check him out for all the projects he's working on. I'm Sarah Z from La La Land. Un bacio. Appreciate Ciao. you. Thank you, Sarah. Grazie. Ciao. Ciao, Mark. Ciao. Bye-bye.